everyone always wants to know the exact way to get in shape. So in today's episode, I'm going to reveal the exact process I use to get myself and my clients shredded. Good morning and welcome to One Take, your daily book kicking with myself, Connor Anderton. If you don't know who I am by now and you are just listening, just finding out about this podcast, I am an online coach of 10 years specializing in physique transformations and getting guys incredibly strong. So if you are a person who needs help with your physique or the strength that you have in the gym, message me below and I'll help you out. Right, enough of that. Straight into today's episode. Everybody's asking me, how do I get in shape? It's the most common question I get from inquiries, consultations, clients, <laughs> who might not have uh, worked with me for a get in shape goal. Let's say they had a performance goal or powerlifting goal or something like that where the physique doesn't necessarily take priority. And they're not just that, people who follow me on Instagram or whatever it might be, okay? So I'm kind of just, I'm not gonna mess around in today's episode. I wanna jump straight in and talk about the, the process of getting in shape because the, the reality is most people struggle to get in shape and it's not because it's a difficult thing to do because it isn't, okay? And when I say it's not a difficult thing to do, that's not to, don't play anything. That's not to make people feel bad or act like, you know, the terrible <laughs> for not for not being in shape or getting in shape or, you know, maybe failing at some point in the process. That's that's not what I'm doing. What I mean when I talk about getting in shape and it being easy is the fact that scientifically it's actually very specific and it's very obvious about what to do because the body responds in one way, pretty much for everyone, don't get me wrong, there's variables, people's uh, metabolic rates, people's um, li lifestyles, factors, you know, daily outputs, changing muscle mass, there's all sorts of stuff that, of course, does affect the individual. However, from a general point of view, as a coach, many coaches, we use the same process for absolutely everyone, okay? And that's because it works. So if I was to talk you through getting a client set up who is out of shape and following through the process of getting in shape the first thing we do is all the boring stuff we'll have a chat and we'll get get the details down about you know how does the lifestyle look what are the daily habits what does the daily nutrition look like what sort of foods do they enjoy what sort of foods do they hate do they tend to binge at night do they get hungry at night do they get hungry in the afternoon do they get good sleep how many days a week do they train all this stuff okay so, of course, everything has to be very specific to the individual, like I said, because even though scientifically things make sense in how to coach someone, individually, science cannot tell you that. It has to come from experience and asking the right questions. So, once we've got all the information down about, you know, what this person's lifestyle is like and how they go about their daily business, we have to put, we have to put the right thing in place, Okay. So I will immediately get started. I'll be looking at the starting photograph, see what we need to work on. You know, where does that body fat tend to sit? Um, and just kind of figure out the starting point, you know, what they're weighing, what sort of body weight do we need to get them down to? More of a guesstimate, but a very educated guess. What sort of body fat level are they currently at? How many pounds per week do we need to lose within the time frame that they have? You know, if they got a six month goal, okay, we need to lose X amount of weight per week in order to achieve that goal based off them guesstimations. So there's a lot of factors that go into this, okay? And it's not just something that you pull out your ass and send all over a plan. It has to be very specific, has to be well thought out and individual. So once I've thought out the nutritional side where I'll always start, I'll figure out how many calories they need, um, split that into individual macronutrients, you know, a certain amount of protein, carbs, fats, all that good stuff. How much water does this person need to drink? Um, do they need a meal plan? Or are they just going to track and calculate the calories on their own? Do they need both? A lot of my clients have both. They'll have meal plan examples, training day meal plans, rest day meal plans. Okay, you don't want to follow that. There's your macros, there's your calories. Go and follow that, okay? From there, once I've got all the, the nutritional stuff built and it's um, food, you know, that is going to digest well, feel good. 
Um, it's going to help them perform well. It's going to be high protein. It's going to be satiating, so it's going to keep them full. Um, there's a lot of foods that I would say are kind of like diet hacks. I hate to use that word, but they are um, in the sense that they're going to they're going to do you a lot a lot more good than other foods. Okay, if you're eating 300 grams of carbohydrates a day, and the majority of that is from let's say oatmeal, um, potatoes, fruits. Ve veggies berries stuff like that that's going to feel a lot better in terms of um, satisfying hunger and staying full and satiated if your food intake on the flip side is more cereal rice based stuff that's going to just get through that digestive system so quick and you're going to be hungry again there's a reason that when we are trying to gain weight gain muscle mass um, and keep that appetite high that we eat rice based foods because they just digest beautifully, okay? We want stuff to be a bit slower in the system. So we'll look at all the factors, right? So once we've got that built out and the person's happy, uh, we've made all the adjustments we need to the meal plan, to the calories and stuff like that, and the person's good to go, and they go, look, I can stick to that. That looks good. I'm not going to have any issues. Cool, job one done. Then we look at the training, okay? How many days per week are the training? Okay, let's say the training three days. Three days a week training? Okay, ideally, we're going to be doing full body, full body, full body. Um, if you want to argue with me on that, feel free, but you will probably be wrong. Full body, full body, full body is probably going to be ideal for three days. Um, don't get me wrong, I might have some clients listening to this saying, Connor, you don't have me on full body, full body, full body. I train three days a week. It's because we looked at other individual factors for yourself. Okay. So once we've planned that out and add um, emphasis on different days, okay, we could have chest and back focus days, we could have leg focus days, we could have shoulder and arm focus days and all this sort of stuff and we have that frequency nice and high, so that you're in an optimal position to grow, cool, that's the training plan done, okay? Sounds really quick, but again, this comes with a decade of experience of writing these plans and knowing what I'm doing. Again, down to the individual, what gym are they in? What kit do, uh, does this person have access to? There's no point in me giving them this specific piece of kit. If the gym doesn't have it, how ridiculous would that be? Um, and then filtering that down to, okay, what, how much volume does this person need? What's their experience level? What can they recover from? Okay, the dieting, so maybe we don't want to push them quite as hard because recovery is going to be a little bit slower. We have to take that into consideration. So that comes down to, okay, how many sets and reps are we doing? Are we pushing the sets to failure? Are we using intensity techniques like rep matches and giant sets, etc.? All this stuff gets factored in, okay? So then that's built. After we've done that, we look at if this person needs cardio. Some people do, some people don't. A lot of my clients will diet on no cardio. A lot of my clients need cardio. Again, very individual when it comes down to it, for myself, when I diet, I don't need any cardio because I respond very well just to simple calorie drops. I have some clients who just need a fuck ton of cardio and it can be really frustrating, but it is what it is. After we've looked at that, we'll look at the steps. How many steps per day does this person need? Steps is the easiest way to lose fat, okay? If you're on average and you're, you're doing not many steps per day, let's say you're sitting at your desk all day, you're doing three, 4,000, which is actually really common. Imagine pushing that to 6,000, to 8,000, fat loss, all day like that, as long as you're in a calorie deficit, of course. Once we looked at that, and that's factored in, we're pretty much ready to go, okay? You've got your nutrition plan, correct amount of calories, training plan in a very specific manner, cardio if you need it, and then you've got your steps. And of course, this person set the goals and everything aligns with them goals, and we're pretty much ready to go, okay? How do things work from there? When we make adjustments, I'm giving away the formula here, guys, like just so you know. A client is going to get results in them first few weeks, of course, yeah. Let's, let's say, for example, they don't, so I can give you some more information. We make an adjustment, okay? And we look at the plan and look what's working and look what's not working. Um, has the person been ultra compliant to the plan, okay? And they've not lost anything? We'll have to look at other factors. Are they really stressed? Are they really sore? Are, are they developed an illness? If them factors come in, there's no way in hell we're going to drop food. There's no way in hell we're going to give them more cardio. That'd be crazy because them factors are what are affecting scale weight, okay? And of course, we have to look at the progression photos to sort of back this up. However, if this person isn't stressed, if this person isn't inflamed, if this person isn't, hasn't, sorry, developed an illness and that scale weight isn't budging, okay, maybe we started too high calorie and we have to pull that down a little bit. These are the things that we have to look at on a weekly basis in order to keep a person progressing. The problem people have is that they'll... Look, oh, I'll just get a meal plan. I'll just do this and that's it. That's my plan for this diet. That's not how it works. 
the body is very adaptive it will catch up with you at some point food needs to drop at some point steps have to increase there has to be adjustments made every time you slow down something you're gonna to have to be willing to accept and for me and my clients this is why we do weekly check-ins weekly reviews where i pretty much cross-reference all the data that i have in front of me from scale weight to steps to train to progression photos to sleep to stress to soreness to illness to all these sorts of things right uh, nutrition compliancy and we a cross reference everything okay what well, everything's cross referenced to get a, a progression to get a uh, a step forward with the client is so simple as long as this stuff is filled in the problem people have is they go and wing it they go oh i'm dieting i'm going to eat 2000 calories and suddenly they just do that and they don't understand all the facts that are included. They'll get on the scale, the scale might be up. <laughs> They've not cross-referenced all of the bits of data that matter. I know it seems boring, but if you wanna get results really fast, calculate your stuff, write down your data. It's very, very simple. So yeah, guys, I'm not gonna bore you too much with this, but that's the process of how I would work with a client in order to get them a result. And if you look at my Instagram and you look at the level of results these guys are getting, there's a reason to get the results because we are so thorough with everything. Doesn't mean that we're overly strict and we're negatively impacting someone's life. It just means that we're fur. End of the day, people come to me to get a result and pay me good money to get a result. And I'm going to get them that and do everything in my ability to get them there. Experience comes, you know, hugely within this. Um, but yes, so guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Bit of a different podcast for you today, a bit of a different episode. I thought it'd be very good to give you some insights in, you know, the, the start to finish build out. I know that was a very simplistic form, but end of the day the goal with this podcast is to teach you as much as i possibly can to give you as much information to help you so that you can go away on your own and utilize this information to the best of your ability okay so guys that is today's episode i hope you enjoy it hope you have a good day this was one take your daily book kicking go and have a good day and i'll see you tomorrow for the next episode